This can be quite tricky, but different approaches at different stages of life are going to help you. It's not one size fits all because at different stages of life we're experiencing different things. But knowing where you stand and how to deal with this will save you a lot of heartache and pain. This is what we're going to be talking about in the video today. friends and welcome back I hope that you're all doing really well today's video okay I was um, reading through the comments um, on some of the videos and yeah this this was a great question for from quite a few of you and and this topic is great uh, because we have to understand that narcissism shows up in all stages of life but also in various areas of life. And I really wanted to expand this topic because I feel like it's really important to kind of understand and know what you're dealing with and what tools you can put in place to be able to help you. Because, you know, what you would be doing in an adult relationship is gonna be different if you are an adolescent or a young adult, like what are you gonna be doing? So that there's different things or different strategies that will help you once you understand what is going on and how to deal with it. So my friends, before we get into the video, just really quickly, I do go live on this channel every single Tuesday. These lives are an absolute vibe. We talk about so many topics, they're inspirational talks, but also we've got that amazing community on the live chat alongside the live, which are so supportive, so amazing. And if there's a question or there's something that maybe you wanna talk about or just wanna get some support, I'd say, come on over, join the live. We would love to see you there. Okay, so dealing with narcissism, okay, is gonna require different strategies, different things that you will need to put into place. Because when we're talking at different stages of life, there are going to be different requirements that you are going to have to kind of like put in place. And there's going to be different dynamics that are involved as well. Let's start off with childhood and adolescence. This is a really critical part, um, a development in your developmental stage. And it, usually if you are dealing with narcissism at such an early point in your life, then that means that possibly your parents or family members are narcissistic. And at this stage, what I would say to you is because maybe perhaps you don't have the vocabulary or the understanding of what really is going on, but you know that these people make you feel bad, um, please know that there are people that can help you. There are adults that would be able to listen to you. Start at school or maybe at college um, and maybe try and talk to someone or a school counsellor about what is going on. Perhaps maybe there are teachers or relatives that can help you. Um, maybe just even listening because you don't have to embody all of this and suppress it within you. You can release it in safe amounts. Please know that if you you have someone that is trusted that this information won't go any further but don't suppress it don't just keep it inside of you because that's the worst thing that you can do I would also say keep a journal as well keep a journal of your thoughts and things that are coming up for you and do, doing that will really help you to focus on building your self-esteem and your confidence because at this stage in life it is really important that you do this to know that none of this is your fault and you don't deserve this and that unfortunately this is the dynamic this is the family dynamic that you were born into and there's nothing at this stage that really can be done to change it but what you can do is change the way that you react or way you respond to these situations. Also, try and think about maybe other ways of you being able to channel um, that recovery for you, for example. Maybe you could join some groups or maybe there's like after school or maybe there's groups in your local area that maybe you could do some sports or maybe activities and hobbies that will help you to kind of um, think about other things rather than just focusing on this situation. So then we move on to young adulthood in our kind of late teens, 20s. All right, so 
at this point maybe you have a little bit more freedom but perhaps maybe you're still living you know with your parents and you're still in that dynamic maybe there's also friendships that now you are noticing that people can be quite toxic within them this is about establishing healthy relationships and prioritizing your own needs this is what you need to start practicing is or Try and connect to what it is that you need. This is where, you know, you have a lot more understanding on what is going on for you, what is happening, what's right, what's wrong, you know. So now it's time to start connecting and understanding your own needs. You also need to start practicing advocacy, self-advocacy, which means that educating yourself on what manipulation is, what control is, and what toxic relationships look like. This is about you understanding what is happening emotionally. These people, right, you know that these people around you, okay, they are toxic. It doesn't make you feel good. But this is about now educating yourself, learning about what it is that these people do that makes you feel bad. This is why I said connecting to yourself, understanding your own needs are really going to help you to understand this next part. This is about really training and understanding your emotional needs, what's coming up for you, what's going on. You know, perhaps maybe you have even started to get negative thoughts. And this is about, you know, like, understanding what are these thoughts about you know maybe journaling writing this down don't keep it in don't suppress it that's the worst thing you can do perhaps maybe even seeking um someone that you can talk to maybe a counselor um maybe a trusted friend or another adult that might be able to help you to guide you through this you need to find people or mentors that are going to be kind and compassionate, that can basically show you that there is a different way of interaction, that there's a different way around this. And they need to be able to model those behaviors so that actually you can understand that, you know, adulthood or these adults that you have around you or maybe your friends, like this isn't right. And so you can experience compassion. So now we get into adulthood. So at this point, you know what, you, you can do whatever you want to do, basically. But first of all, what I would say to you is you need to establish boundaries. That's the bottom line, like out of all of this. You need to establish boundaries. You know what's right and wrong. You know what is good for you. You know your needs. And if it's something that you don't, please practice connecting to yourself and understanding what your needs are. Because seriously, like if you don't, then you're not going to be able to put boundaries in place. You're always going to try and be kind to everyone else, always serving everybody else's needs. But you don't have to do that. That's not what is expected of you as an adult. Maybe this is something that you have learned, you know, as in your childhood, in your growing up but that's not what is expected of you. You need to think of you, you need to put yourself first. I would also say seek therapy or counseling to kind of uncover or talk to someone, okay, someone who has experience, someone who understands, to maybe uncover any kind of lasting or lingering effects of narcissistic abuse. This can have great effects on our self-esteem, on our self-worth and the way that we think about the world, the way that we show up in the world, the way that we even show up to ourselves. It is really important for you, okay, to understand this and be able to move forward. And also this will help with developing a healthier coping mechanisms as well. Seek support, make new friendships if you need to. It's just about being around other people who are not so toxic, who are not so dark and heavy and just take a lot of your energy so you feel drained. This is about emotional validation and support, which is what we all need, especially if we have gone through something like this. We need that help from others to be able to, for us to be able to experience it. Okay, so the next one is parenting. So if you are a parent and perhaps maybe your partner or your child shows some narcissism, you need to be able to set clear boundaries and you need to be able to initiate them. Ultimately, it's you that has to take control over your child because if you allow your child to do whatever they want to do and you, there are no boundaries, well then that child's behavior, okay, you haven't set any parameters, you haven't set any kind of like points or points of reference where this child is, what is allowed and what's not. 
This is kind of your responsibility to be able to keep it within those parameters. What you're doing, okay, is you're showing empathy, but also you are modeling positive behavior. That's all that you can do because like this child needs to see that this is how adulthood, adult, adulthood should be and relating to others. This is a healthy way of relating to others. I also would say for you, if you are a narcissistic, um, if you are a parent, I would say to you is also try and talk to others as well that can show you some compassion and emotional validation as well because doing this on your own is challenging is difficult and i know that it also wears on your energy and your emotions so being able you know to have some sort of support will help you in dealing with your child the, and lastly the last stages of life elderly narcissistic parents or partners usually at this stage narcissists don't really have any patience all right they really don't have any patience at all so they are going to be nasty they're going to be like they're going to have no understanding so i feel like at this point you need to again limit your time you need to be able to put boundaries in place and this is up uh, this is for you to let this just like go over your head because if you are going to challenge it you're going to get into arguments and it's like there's no point because this person doesn't understand they're not listening they don't know they're not listening to you so that is what is going to be really important for you to be able to work through this, but for you to kind of keep your own sanity as well. So do protect yourself. In all stages of life, all right, when you are dealing with narcissism, it is important for you to protect yourself emotionally. Narcissists operate on the fact that they need to get emotional validation from you and they will do anything to get it. They are going to trigger you. All right, they're going to make you feel awful, but this is up to you, right? You know what's going on. So this really is up to you to be able to put these barriers, to put these boundaries in place so that you are constantly in a state of like, you can protect yourself, you know what's going on, and you know what tools to use for your self-care. Dealing with narcissism isn't easy and it is challenging, but it is your responsibility to put certain things in place, these strategies in place, all right, to help you to get through it. For a lot of you, it's not easy for you to go no contact from this person, or it's not easy for you to be able to let to, to let go. So if you have to have narcissistic people in your life, put these strategies in place, because these will really help you to keep your sanity. If you are someone that is going through this, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. And if you want to talk with me, please see the description box below. I've also got a mentorship and a journal club if you're interested in joining and elevating your healing journey, please see the description box below. And also finally, I've got an absolutely free Discord server, which is a community of like-minded individuals. If you're interested in joining, please see the description box below. Guys, I really hope this video has helped. I really do. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.